let you Woody Jack Nimson check it out because you know what, man? We were led to believe, okay, that Drake was nothing but a hundred percent pure moist pussy, okay? Basically, he had to rhyme over elevator music, music you'd hear in a spa, a track, a fucking track that you could almost make love to your girl with, okay? We were led to believe that Meek Mill, Meek Mill's from that battle culture, he could eat Drake's head off, right? We were led to believe that Meek Mill was going to go into Toronto, right? Disrespect the sixth god, perform his diss song. Pretty much, we were led to believe. That charged up was nothing but it was it was anything but being charged. Okay, it was actually flower bed music. It's something that's only real. It couldn't be something that's bait. That's what Drake got. Okay, because he's pussy, of course. Now here's the thing, because we only see the facts nowadays that actually coincide with the our side of the story. But let me just get down and let me lay down some facts, okay? These are irrefutable because a lot of you guys have revisionist history, right? Let's just kind of rewind, right? Now, I saw a whole nigga tweet at me, though, like, yo, man, Meek shouldn't even respond to Drake. That Drake diss he's talking about charged up was soft as baby shit, soft as Johnson and Johnson baby lotion. And I thought to myself, I said, I'm a Drake fan. Maybe I'm a little biased. Let me check myself. Now I check myself and I said, wait, hold up, wait a minute. Let me get myself charged up and really think about this logically. I said, hold on, okay. For what we, the public, and I'm part of the public, all that industry shit, I don't know about that shit, okay? Listen, last week, Tuesday, right, Meek Mill jumped off the cliff, decided to take his gun off safety, fired at Drake, claimed he did not write his own raps, didn't write a bunch of shit, including his verse for Rico. Now, Mink Mill went on through the night, basically entertaining it, basically calling Drake out, getting hundreds of thousands of retweets. He loved it. Now, he said he got to expose niggas because he's too real, right? He even said, pray the real live forever and all the fake get exposed. This is Drake lyric, but he said it too. Now, three days after, right? We thought that, damn, Drake is now, the, listen, the jig is up. Drake is about to really just come out, really stop the rapping, all he's singing. But Drake actually drops a track on the OVO radio. It's called Charged Up. He dropped it on Friday. Think about the timeline, right? Three days after Tuesday, that would be Friday. Okay, cool. Now, let's not act like Drake is some bum nigga either that has nothing to do. Don't Let's not act like he wasn't playing kickball with the kids for charity and he had to take a break from the charity to handle another charity case, which is Meek. But okay, the ball is in your court, Meek, right? You started this in, on Twitter, right? Three days later, Drake dissed you on a song. Now you got three days. Now, I said in pretty much the Twitter collective and pretty much the fans, because listen, we as fans, we got to make some demands out of these motherfucking artists, okay? We got to hold them to some type of standards, because right now the loose behavior, can, the flexible nigga behavior cannot be going on, okay? So we said, cool. Drake responded in three days. He had no idea. You blindsided him, right? You should be able to respond in three days. We said Monday, 8 p.m. I know you on tour, but nigga, you a fucking rapper, okay? You're going to show up to Toronto. You probably got a studio on your bus. You could probably stop somewhere and do it, right? Now, here's the thing. He shows up to Toronto right after they pump fake like, oh, they couldn't get to Toronto because Drake is doing some funny shit. Come on, stop it. Now, they get to Toronto. Basically, Meek doesn't headline the show. It's really Nikki's show. So, Nikki goes on, but Nikki doesn't close this time. It's the first time. Nikki doesn't close her own fucking show. Meek Mill does, so we're expecting a yes. Meek Mill is about to deliver the goddamn diss of a century. He's about to hold it down for the, the quote-unquote real street niggas. He's about to sun all the bitch niggas and all the light-skinned niggas. Put them in their place. Show people that Philly niggas is here and Toronto niggas is bitches. That's at least what his manager said. He said, listen, ain't no nigga from Canada could tell us what to do. Okay, cool. Now... He shows up to Toronto, performs last, basically he funked, faking, flexed it, basically didn't do anything, no diss song, he performed like six songs, none were dissed to Drake, actually didn't mention Drake at all, he got booed and then sent on his way, and I'm like, huh? Now, early in the day, okay, and I really didn't want to put this on Twitter, because especially with Funkmaster Flex on his whole debacle, I don't want people getting on me, because I only put out facts, okay? I got tipped off about a new Drake track. I even tweeted out, I said, yo, it's going to be a very interesting next 12 hours, okay? Now, apparently, it was supposed to drop the same time Meek was on stage dissing Drake. However, because Meek didn't diss Drake, it didn't drop then. Now, basically, Drake went back in, changed a couple of lines because Meek didn't say nothing, and basically said, listen, he started counting the days just like we are. He says, it's your fourth day, my nigga. We waiting. Where you at? 
and they've charged up with spa music, well, this might as well be fighting music then. Now, let's just run down the quotables, because he did have a couple of quotables. Like, the thing is what people didn't like, and this is the thing about rapping and hip-hop, right? To me, and I'm going to just tell you off the top, I thought charged up was way more clever, but the thing is when you diss somebody these days, people don't like the clever lines. People like the outright disses. The people who are defending Safari's diss to Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill, they loved it because he's just said the most blatant and vulgar shit. So basically, trying to be clever with it like how Jay-Z used to take used to take uh, his approach to beefs, not going to work. You got to just flat out say like, nigga, you a hoe because this, okay? People are simple as fuck with what they want, right? So basically... Drake jumped out, and he just said what people wanted to hear. Let me just go down a couple of lines. Now, the link is in the description, right? Now, he said this. He said, I waited for days, nigga. Where y'all at? I drove here in the Wrath playing AR Ab, right? He said, I'm not sure what it is that really made y'all mad, but I guess this is what I got to do to make y'all rap. And I mean, listen, like, he's talking about getting shoulder rubs in goddamn Philly. Not only that, he's also talking about Nikki's relationship with Meek and basically said to Meek, he's like, yo, listen, man, this is for y'all that think I don't write enough. They just mad because I got the Midas Touch. The Midas Touch is the Drake stimulus package. Please be aware, okay? Now, he also said, which I thought this line, everybody's talking about this line, okay? He says, you love her. Then you gotta give the world to her. Is that a world tour or your girl's tour? I know that you gotta be a thug for her. This ain't what she meant when she told you to open up more. Yeah, trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. You getting bodied by a singing nigga, okay? Now, I'm gonna just tell you this, man. He also went with some more disrespectful lines as well, saying, Shout out to all my boss bitches, obviously Nikki. Wife in niggas, basically saying Nicki Minaj's wife in Meek, okay? Told my make sure you hit him with a prenup, tell them that, or tell that man to ease up, okay? Now, basically, man, he kind of just shitted on Meek Mill the whole time, okay? Basically, this track, if not for anything else, and as I told you, Meek should have responded already. We have to officially give Meek a L. He will be sitting on a L, a loss, fucking loss. Until he responds. Now, we're, there's no more timer. You don't have to be like, oh, he got to respond in the next 24. No, no, no. You lost. Okay, we no more timer. You fucking lost. Now, if you drop a track, and that track better be definitely flames for us to even really revisit it and actually start crossing out L's and putting W's. So we'll see if Meek Mill responds. I think he will, but it's clear, man. Drake got him somehow shook because when he was going back and forth, like people would tweet him. He was getting that safari the next day. Don't tell me it's that hard for a fucking rapper to rap. Oh, come on, come on now. N nigga, come on. Okay, what I'm saying is, we gotta be fair. Okay, whether you want to talk about the quality, we don't have the quality to discuss. We know Drake put out, in my opinion, two good tracks. One was a better diss than the other. But then, we don't have nothing to compare that Meek has. Meek has a bunch of tweets. So until he drops a song, we have to assume and we have to assign him a fucking L, okay? Now, I know there's Meek fans that's probably like, no, no, this and Come on. Let's be fair. Until he drops a track, it's a fucking L. He's going to have to hold it. And that's just what it is. You never start a war unless you're prepared with a gun. How the hell are you going to come to a goddamn gun battle and you got a goddamn pocket knife? The fuck is going on? Niggas got a bunch of tweets and, and memes and jokes. And then when it comes down to it, no bars. God damn it, man. Come on, man. Listen, it's 2-0 Drizzy. It's a rap. Okay? Meek Mill has to drop a track for us to think about. It has to be so crazy. We got to think like, damn, we got to revisit this. We have to revisit this. If I was Drake to keep it real, I would probably drop another track tonight and just call it 3P, 3-0. Fuck out of here, my nigga. It's over. What do you guys think, man? Get a comment section. Make sure you guys listen to the track, man. To me, it was a dope track. Uh, listen. I don't think it was more clever than Charged Up, but it was more blatant than Charged Up. And the thing is, people want the blatant kind of aggressive shit. So he put a little bit more bass in it. The last track ain't had no bass. That's why people thought it was so soft. People wanted some shit where he's kind of screaming or he's kind of saying something aggressively. That's the thing about beef. It's not even really about the fucking rhymes. I'm telling you, Charged Up was more clever, but this is actually a more direct this song. So get in the comment box. Make sure you guys like. Definitely subscribe and check out the track. And also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I'm Academics. Hello.